Okay, so as you can see, the class is very excited about this problem, about SAT scores. So we're. <laughs> Did he yes, he booed me on my recording. Oh, I booed oh, okay. All right. Well, just to make it clear. Yes, I am currently recording. So we're going to do this problem, which is a sampling distribution model problem for a mean. Okay? For a mean. So if you read this real quick, it tells you the SAT scores should have a mean of 500 with a standard deviation of 100. And we're looking at a random sample of 20 students. Okay? And it says, we know the sample size is small, but we think that the population, so all the scores, if you looked at them, would be roughly unimodal and symmetric. So we're not worried about that sample size being small. So let's make our two assumptions. Again, you know my rule from yesterday about abbreviations. As long as they're not swear words, we're all good. The independence assumption. Who wants to give it a try in context? The statement that you would write about this problem for assuming independence. Who wants to give it a shot? Yes, let's go for it. Leslie. Uh, one student score will not fix. Will not affect every student's score. Perfect. I'm going to write that. Are you okay if I copy it word for word? Sure. One student's score does not affect another student's score. I think it was curved. Uh, that was on the the score? Yeah. Well, it shouldn't matter, right? If everyone's curved, it doesn't matter. We're not talking about that's them deciding what the scores are. I'm talking about if I look at the scores that they're giving to me, I don't know what they do behind their doors, right? Okay, do we agree with this? Do we agree that one student score will not affect another? Okay, I mean, can you prove that if you're not in the room? Probably not. Okay, how? Because, I mean, that student has more knowledge about a particular topic in a room. Yes, but if you are the person that's getting a better grade, better score than I am, is you getting a better score affecting how I do? It might say things about us, but it doesn't necessarily impact the scores we got. Okay? Yes, does it? Will poly competition when applying to colleges no level of competition? Okay, so you're saying that the the scores are gonna kinda help you decide where you're gonna go to college. But I still don't I think you and Jarvis are talking about the same thing, where it says something about you for colleges, but I'm talking about does it have an impact on the other person's score? Can anyone think of a way that these twenty kids would have an impact? Yes. Wait, are, are they in the same room? Uh, you tell me. Yes. They're in the same room together. Okay. So one Are they? Ahead of time, it might affect the other students studying more for the Oh, okay. All right. Why do you want to like I'm scared? And like, like the intimidation is avoiding me. Like I'm scared to take the test. I'm like, oh, I'm just okay. Like so like, safety in the room. He looks like weird. I'm mean, like. The only way. Can you both the wrong answer? The only yeah. Okay, Jarvis. Sorry. Like, can we go back to Catherine's curve though? Because if if a student takes a curve, that's all students are like. But if one person makes a perfect score, mm -hmm. then the curve is gone. So for, that would affect the score of everyone else. First of all, do we know that they curve it? Right? I think we were. They, okay. I, but what I'm trying to say is that to me is like before the sausage is made. I'm talking about now I have I bought the sausage. Yeah. So I don't care about the behind the door. Real quick, guys. Real quick. The one way that I thought there could be some issues here is what if these 20 students are all from the same high school? Then maybe there might not be independence there. Okay? But if these are 20 students from the city of Houston, or 20 students from the state of Texas, or 20 students from America, I'm not real worried about independence there. Okay? But what conditions can we check to make us feel better? Randomization, very good. Someone write that down. Randomization condition. Okay, I'm hoping that it says somewhere that this is a random sample of 20 kids. Does it? Yes. yes. So I'm going to write down, this is a random 
sample of 20 students. Okay, what's the other condition we can check? 10% and we can do a little math here. Not mu, but the sample size n. So I'm going to do n times 10. And this sample size is 20. So what is 20 times 10? 200. Now, again, I don't know. This, is, this problem only gave me like a few sentences to do it. So if we're thinking about city of Houston, state of Texas, America, are there more than 200 of those students they're sampling from? Yes. Absolutely there are, right? Even this school, there'd be more than 200. So I'm not worried about our sample size. Yes? <laughs> I'm not worried about our sample size uh, being too large. So this is 20 is not too large. That's what the 10% condition is checking, that your sample size is not too big. Yes. Okay, so in yesterday's problem, yeah. it didn't say it was random? It didn't. And what did I write? That it represents all. It's a good representation of all. So if it had said they just had a sample of 20 students, Bianca, I would have written, I think these 20 students are a good representation of all students. Right? I mean, we're talking about like a watered down problem here, Bianca. If you're doing this for your job, I mean, you've got a lot more information. The school districts they're from, maybe. Right, the cities they're from, the states they're from, the countries they're from. Okay. Everything good? Excellent. All right, let's do the other assumption. What is the other assumption we're going to make? The sample size assumption. All right, who's got this sentence? Who's got this sentence? And someone other than a Leslie. Who's got this sentence? Who's got this sentence about our sample size in this problem? Who's got it? Come on, Saul. Come on, Saul. <laughs> 20 students. Done. Perfect. Yeah, you did actually say it, but it's all good. 20 students is a large enough sample. Something like that, right? It doesn't need to be word for word but something about that this sample size is large enough, right? We just checked that it's not too large. Now we need to make sure that it's large enough, right? Think of the Goldilocks, right? Just right. So here's the thing, right? With proportions, we can check the success failure condition. What condition are we going to talk about with means? Right, really, it's well named, right? Large enough sample condition. Okay, now Jarvis asked the question, the question right now, how do you know? The answer is Jarvis, I don't know. Okay, I know it's going to feel a little weird. All right, I don't know, but here's what I do know, Jarvis, right? I do know 20 students, if we're talking about the city of Houston, is a small sample, right? Think about the city of Houston, how many kids took the SAT this year? A lot of students. So 20 is tiny, okay? That's really small, so that worries me. But it says in the problem that we think a normal model applies to all of these student scores. So if your population is normal or looks unimodal and symmetric, then it really doesn't matter how small your sample is. But Jarvis, if it had said, hey, this population histogram is skewed in either direction, then I would want my sample size to be higher to make me feel a little bit better about it. Okay. Now, I'm going to try to sum that up in a sentence. 20 students is going to be large enough because the population distribution is unimodal and symmetric. All right, so I'm going to repeat that again while you're writing it. Basically, because there's no math we can do to check this, 
we have to ask ourselves, what does the population distribution look like? If I were to make a histogram of all of the SAT scores for all the seniors in, in the city of Houston for this year, all right, what would that histogram look like? And the problem's telling me it's going to look unimodal and symmetric. So the fact that that is normal means the sample size is inconsequential. It doesn't matter. All right? But if it says, hey, it's bimodal or there's skewness, all right, then I'm worried and I want my sample size to be higher, maybe like 100 or 1,000 students, especially if we're talking about the city of Houston, a big city. Okay. Questions so far? Okay, let's get in to do some of the math. I know we've done, you've done more writing probably than you did in some of your classes today. So let's do some math. God, I was just thinking what it would be like to be a student again. It's been a long time. Okay. That doesn't sound fun. All right, so the normal model, we need mu and sigma. Okay? What am I going to use for the mean or the average for this problem? 500, right? It says that we're going to assume, all right, that 500 is the average SAT score. So 500. Well, I'm sure they're talking about one section, right? 500 for both sections would be quite low, all right? But 500 for, I think I looked it up yesterday, uh, the state of Texas, the average, I think, for combined is something like 980 or something like that. What? Yeah, for like all of Texas. Something like that. I don't know. I just looked it up somewhere right there. Just like just under 1,000. For the two sections. For the two sections, guys. Out of 1,600. Out of 1,600. They're out of 800. Okay, I know that much. Now, just for the state of Texas, it was like just under 1,000. Okay. It's all good, right? Doesn't matter. All right, here we go. Now, for the standard deviation, we need to use that formula from the notes. That formula was sigma over the square root of n. So I heard Charlize, I think you said it. So it's going to be 100, because that's the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of 20. So I think most of you have a yellow calculator at your seat. You can do 100 divided by the square root of 20. Twenty-two point. And since we haven't had any decimals for this problem, let's just go ahead and use 0.4. Why are we using this Are you talking about yesterday? Okay, so good question. Yesterday was about proportions. All right. So when you have proportions, you actually will use the square root of p q over n. But remember, p so will means the probability of a success. Q means the probability of failure. So there's only two options. Yesterday it was are they speeding? Are they not speeding? But today it's what's their average score? And that score can range from zero to eight hundred. So we don't have like a yes or no type scenario. So that's why when you see units, in this case points. You should be thinking means. We're going to use this. All right. Now, I'll be honest with, with you, Saul. So you're going to kind of forget this, and that's okay, because when we get to chapter 19, the rest of this unit, it's all proportions. All right. This will come back, though. I promise. All right. So let's make our curve. Okay. Remember, leave a spot underneath for some sentence writing. I told myself I was going to make it better than yesterday, but I don't think it is. <sighs> yeah. Eh, it's not great. It's okay. It isn't passable. But I'm not going to get any more followers because of it. Okay. What's going to go right down the middle? Very good. 500. Do you need it, uh, something the right way? You got it, Charlie? Let me know because I have extras. Okay, how many standard deviations do I care about in both directions? Three. So I'm going to go one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so 500 plus 22.4. 22.4 plus another 22.4. So I'm near to the next one, thank you. Excellent. OK. 
Okay. I also want to go the other, other direction, subtract the 22.4. Did you get something different, Charles? So, did you? Yeah, okay. Right. Now, the first thing that I noticed when I did this in high school was I was like, okay, if it's a population, it would have gone 500, 600, 700, 800, right? Because the population standard deviation was 100, right? Remember that number? But because we're talking about a sampling distribution model, we have to use this formula. And what do you notice about this standard deviation? It's much smaller. So now we're going, instead of going 500 to 800, we're going, we didn't even crack 600. Okay? So just something to be aware of in that difference between the population and when you're taking a sample. All right? Now, I know yesterday I really struggled with typing. So I was like, I'm not doing that again. Sorry about that. So I decided to make this easier for you. Oh, why would I write it down when I already have it? All right, so why don't they pay me the big bucks? All right. Oh. <laughs> this is the statement right here. So Leslie, I know I botched this yesterday. I'm sorry. So this is the statement here. Well, no, you were you were like you wanted to write it down, and I was not helping you at all. So, all right, this was for you, Leslie. All right. Now the numbers might be a little different because of our rounding. Right? They rounded just 0.36, we did 0.4. So do you see where it says uh, these numbers? You can put the numbers that we did or not. It's up to you. Okay? So I'm going to let you take some time to write this down, and then I want to, like yesterday, hopefully summarize what this all means. 